ஹலோ அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு பியூர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் ஆன்லைன் சத்சங் சத்சங் இஸ் அன் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி ஃபார் எவ்ரிபடி டு மீட் அண்ட் டிஸ்கஸ் தி ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் மேட்டர்ஸ் ஸ்பெஷலி ரிலேட்டட் டு த பாத் ஆஃப் நாலேஜ் ஐ ட்ரை டு ஆன்சர் யுவர் கொஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் கிளியர் யுவர் டவுட்ஸ் அண்ட் வீ டூ த ஒர்க் ரிகார்டிங் த ப்ரோக்ராம் ஹியர் ஸோ இஃப் தெர் ஆர் எனி கொஷின்ஸ் யூர் மோஸ்ட் வெல்கம் டு ஆஸ்க் ஐ ஆம் கோயிங் டு ஸ்டார்ட் வித் அ கொஷன் தட் ஐ ரிசீவ்ட் இன் த ப்ரோக்ராம் so this is a question from ayushman somewhat long question so i'm going to read it experiences are endless isn't it better we end put this topic in the category of unknowable each coin have two sides because chances are there at some point death the experiences may be over or like in the experiment where the experience is still there I personally think the experiment is maybe wrong because we are already bringing in an observer which obviously means the observer is the experiencer himself. My point is that it is impossible to claim or to prove why I mean any experiment that this experiences will remain forever are not because assuming that experiences are endless is also blind belief and according to our criteria for truth and falls in the category of false. So it is a well thought question there and uh, looks like that uh, the basic doubt is that it cannot be proven that the experiences are endless this is the doubt in the mind of ayushman so first of all i don't know where you are in the program i can't remember have you arrived at the basic analysis of the experiences probably not so it will be cleared in that part in that lesson where we analyze using the seven question experiences just like we have analyzed the experiencer and we have found that the experiencer is beyond time we never say that it is endless we say it is eternal i am talking about the experiencer right now the observer it is somewhat unfortunate that the words experience and experiencer they can be easily confused because there is only one r that separates them it is sometimes we make the spelling mistake or while talking also so sometimes i will say observer of the, or the witness or the atman just to emphasize the difference so just like we have done the analysis of the experiencer and we found that it is actually endless which means there is no start and the beginning of the experiencer it was found like this and uh, we call it uh, not endless we call it eternal which simply means that time has no meaning when applied to it so let us say what is the smell of um color red for example now you can see concept has been wrongly applied there the smell has nothing to do with color red cannot be applied smell is applied to materials and same way we can say that uh, what is the taste of happiness is not possible the taste is applied to foods and all not to happiness same way when we say when is the end of the experience or the experiencer it is a wrong application of concept the time can be applied to an object the belief of the time can be applied to an object not to the fundamentals like the experience or the experiencer so anyhow this is the first thing we should consider whether we can apply the, our day to day concepts to something which is so fundamental like existence experience or experience so on emptiness can we apply it the memory the vibration we should think about it first is it even possible and if you want to confirm it then always use the means of knowledge which are the direct experience and logic we should not forget that logic is our means of knowledge whatever is concluded from logic can be called knowledge this is our decision to employ logic as our means of knowledge intellect so obviously you will come to know that the experiences are eternal that is beyond time when you do the basic analysis lesson but i am going to explain a little bit because it looks like that there are no other questions here so while the questions appear in the minds of participants meanwhile i can 
going a little bit deeper into this question. Okay, the <laughs> questions appeared. Very good, my Pardeep. So anyhow, I am going to tell you in one or two sentences why experiences are eternal. The direct experience says that time is an experience, although it is not even an experience. Everybody knows this. Time is not experienced. Change is experienced. And with the help of memory, we form this concept of time, the past, present and future. There is nothing like this. So, immediately through direct experience, we see that the concept of time cannot be applied to the experience itself. That which is appearing is defined formally as the experience. That which is appearing, that which is manifested. And that which is manifested is not getting manifested in time. I think everybody will agree with this. Because if there is already time, there is already clock which is ticking. And now you look at the clock and you wait for the experience to arrive in time. And you keep looking at the clock while your whole manifestation is happening. The existence uh, comes out of the potential, jumps out of the potential, infinite potential in front of your eyes. But look, the clock, you watching it, and the before time of the experience, and all these things are nothing but experiences. That means only an event appeared, not the whole experience. It was already there in the form of you watching the clock and whatever darkness, emptiness, empty space, no space, whatever. Uh, and the experience must come out of some kind of vibrations and potential. So it was already there, latent form. And it is, you know, the experience is always latent. It is, It never becomes real. It is always virtual. There is no real experience. It's a dream. It's like a dream. It's always virtual. Even if it happens, it is virtual because it does not happen. It seems to happen. Something seems to happen. So this is the direct uh, uh, experience and logic part, you see. And about the end, we need to witness the end of all the experience. Otherwise, we cannot say that it ends. So if we cannot say that it ends, we can rightly put it in the category of unknowable, like Aishman says. Aishman says it, yeah. But never forget the power of our intellect, logic. We can use logic here to find out that it will never end or that it is beyond time. We already concluded that time cannot be applied to the whole that which appears. Existence cannot be applied. Time is an, not even an experience actually. It is a, it is a imaginary concept. Imagination. At least the objects are appearing in front of you. At least you can touch it. You can smell it or eat it. Or you can use it like your body. Very useful. But time is not even appearing. Cannot be grasped by senses. It is totally an idea. Anyhow, so if the experience is ending, we need a witness of it. We need a proof of it. We cannot simply say that, look, it is ending. It will end. We cannot say it. We need to provide a proof, evidence. And when we provide, when we are there looking at the whole manifestation ending, then we are there before the end. We are there during the end. Not we, you, we can say, I, I am there before the end. I am there while it is ending. And I am there when it has ended and the clock is ticking again. Because if everything ends, then there is nobody to find out whether it ends or not. So, logic says that if it ends, th that will be only an event that has ended. Because I will be there, clock will be there, and again, the potential will be back in potential form. So, it is, nothing has ended actually. Only the event has ended. A particular kind of manifestation has ended. So, the logic says that the experience cannot end. Our direct experience says that it is beyond time. The concept of time is not applicable. Just like the smell of the col color red is meaningless. Experiences happening in time is meaningless. Time happens as an experience. Experience does not happen in time. Hopefully that is clear. <laughs> so we call the experience as eternal. Not, unknow not unknowable. It can be known that it is eternal. And what is known here is actually we have dropped our belief about time. That's all we have done. What is known? Not, you know, that why it is eternal, how, how, is, how it can be eternal. 
when the clock is ticking you see not all these things what has happened is because of the analysis and use of direct experience and logic we have totally destroyed this question itself about ending of the experience we can say it is a meaningless sentence now experience ending is a meaningless sentence similarly experience or ending or starting is a meaningless sentence so they, because of these this kind of conditioning that everything must happen in time this is conditioning this is not a law of nature this conditioning forces us to apply the concepts that are applied to the everyday objects in the illusion to the most fundamental truths and what we do we take a broom of logic and experience clear it up clean it up similarly you can check the other six questions like where where is the experience how is it happening why is it there who is doing it all that find it out in your program